wow, I'm not good enough. How often haven't we heard that statement mm -hmm. from people somewhere along the way? Or, and how and many times have we said it to ourselves? And we have, yeah, I was gonna, can I, I'm not a, a woman, but you know, even men come through with that same feeling often and say, they you know, do. certain things come like, I'm not good enough for that. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, it comes out in different areas. With us, it's more relationships. With men, it's more work oriented. Well, it's, it, that, precisely. Mm -hmm. well, it, 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 as a matter of fact, we were chatting about this when we, we pulled the book out and looked at it as, mm -hmm. you know, among the staff and so on, we were making comments, be, knowing that we we're going to be doing the programs and so on. Uh, and, and I couldn't believe how women, the women had at one perspective, and then the, guy, the guys have another side of it, mm -hmm. but it still, it still lies. Right. And, you know, we shouldn't be surprised that, of course, we know we're different, but even when we're, and we're going to talk about what happened in the garden, but when you look at the, the result of the curse, when it said that Eve's desire would be for, for her husband and all that was mm -hmm. relationship-oriented part of the curse for her, and then what was the man's curse? It was that he would work the ground and he would have thorns and, mm -hmm. you know, in the work mm -hmm. of, of the ground. So it, even from the beginning, we see that our struggles are, are different. Uh, relationship oriented and work oriented. So the lies that the enemy tells us are going to be different because he knows exactly which lies he needs to tell us to, to and, make and us strong. Well, the ones that we'll respond to. I right. mean, I, I think that's really the part that I. Mm -hmm. I this, for, now, if I, the thought that really got me or that hooked me, and I don't know whether you came up with the title or whether the publisher did, I did just <laughs> share, but, but the very fact you, you came right and said it's called lies, right. you know, and mm -hmm. other lies. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I, I don't think that we immediately assume when we say, well, I'm not good enough. We don't assume that it's a lie. I don't think we see it as a lie. No, and I didn't for years. I didn't. I, you know, I would say things like that to myself. I never thought of it as a lie. And when I was into my 30s, God started showing me that I was believing lies. And I would say things about myself, and then I'd read how God saw me in Scripture, and he just stopped me one day and said, listen, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe all those things you've heard from the past, or are you going to believe the truth of God? Are you going to start seeing yourself as, as I see you? But I think we need to back up and let's see how we get there. Okay, well, let's sure, do that. Let's do, do that. I, okay, it's lie. We're dealing with lies. Where, where does it start? Where does it come from? Exactly. I mean, it, we can go back in Scripture and look and see where lies come from. We look back at when God created the earth. It wasn't too long before Adam and Eve had everything right. That and, and Eve. Now listen, she was married to the only perfect man because sin wasn't in the world. She had everything. I mean, all her <laughs> needs were cared for. A sinless man. I mean. I mean what a dream. What a dream. But um, she had everything, perfect life. And then a few chapters after the beginning, we see that, the, that Satan came into the garden. It says, then the serpent, he came into the garden. And what did he do is he told Eve lies. And he, he said three things to her. And the bottom line of those three things that he said to her was, God is holding out on you mm -hmm. and you will be happy if. And see, that's one of the big lies that we're going to talk about. You will be happy if. She had it all, but yet right, he was saying, right. you'd be happy if you do this one thing that God told you that you could not do. And so she believed the lie, and we know what happened after that. So that's kind of where lies in general come from. But what about with me and you and for people who right. are, who are yeah, watching today? Right. You know, from the time we are born, we receive messages about ourselves. We receive messages from our parents and from our peers. Uh, when we go out into the world, we receive them from school teachers, just in general, we are constantly receiving messages about ourselves. And one book, one book we talked about earlier that I wrote is called The Power of a Woman's Words. And in that book, I think the, the best sentence in there is that our words become the mirror in which other people see themselves. And so we are held up this mirror of, of a distorted mirror of, of, of ourselves, and we start to formulate ideas about who we think we are. Now, I don't want to say, though, that these lies are anybody's fault. That if we think that the lies are because of our husbands or our parents or, or anyone else, then we're fighting the wrong battle. Because okay. our battle okay. is okay. not against flesh and blood, no. as we know the scripture says. Our battle is against the spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. And see, it's the enemy, really, that is, is telling us these lies. And when he speaks to us and says, he speaks to us, we don't, he doesn't say, you were so stupid. What he says is, I am so stupid. We hear that in our spirit life, and then we repeat it. I am so stupid. I am so stupid. I am so stupid. And then before we know it, that becomes our reality. And I am not good enough. I'm not worth anything. These are lies that, that we're hearing, 
from the enemy and then we repeat them and we think that they're true. And, and that's the way it was with me growing up and that's the way it is with most people. Mm -hmm. And you know, I grew up in a home where um, there was a lot of violence and alcohol and uh, my Father used to beat my mom in front of me, and I was grew up terrified. And as a little girl, I felt like I wasn't good enough. If I could just be smart enough, then maybe my daddy would love me. Or if I could just be pretty, maybe my daddy would love me. And I just felt like I wasn't good enough. Even, I mean, from my earliest remembrance, I remember struggling with that. But then I became a Christian as a teenager, and you might think, ah, oh, and then those, those thoughts went away. Everything, yeah, oh, everything, everything became was perfect, peachy. right? Right, no, no, but you know, that didn't, didn't happen. No. And, and um, when I became a Christian as a teenager, um, those thoughts were still there. Nobody pushes the delete button on your mind when you come to Christ, and it tells us that we have to be changed by the renewing of our mind. Yes, our spirits, we have a dead spirit, and the moment we come to Christ, we have an alive spirit. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. But we also have a soul, and that's our mind our will and emotions and those aren't changed in an instant we have to renew the way we think and um, that's the process that we're going to be talking about of replacing those lies with truth but so that's kind of how it starts with us mm -hmm. I mean we mm -hmm. we're programmed um, as young children um, we start to think of ourselves a certain way um, just because we come to Christ doesn't mean those feelings go go away they, they don't we have to change the way we think as a matter of fact once I came to Christ I had a new I'm not good enough now it was I'm not a good enough Christian right mm -hmm. so you added that on to the added. other not good enoughs Absolutely. that were already there mm -hmm. not having a victory in my life I don't have no, enough faith it's true. It's why true. can't I have I, the victory I can't, like she I can't does. read the Bible and understand it the way so-and-so does right you know and, and we're comparing it I can't pray as long as she does and I can't teach like she does so I mean, it's just a whole new realm of I'm not good enough Come, come into play. It's true. So that's it's that's kind true. of how it starts. Okay, starts with us. And but it, but it seems as though then so we're it, it, no one though deliberately is wanting to do this to you. I mean you you your your parents aren't no. deliberately no. wanting. I mean your 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 mom and dad may have had some real issues and your dad you, you know right. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't out to destroy no. you. He no. was now trying to say I'm going to make sure that Sharon when she grows up, she's going to be a girl that doesn't think she's good enough. No, there's, <laughs> no. <laughs> there's no way that's what no. a parent wants. No, and I'm sure they loved me. They just had no idea how to show that to their children. And it's a very rare parent who sets out to destroy their children. Um, but a child perceives things very differently than an adult thinks they perceive it. And they don't really, most parents don't really realize the effects sure. their words are having on their yeah. children. Now, now, and, and it goes back, and, and, and getting back to this, and I know we covered cover this to some extent in the book, because it was the words, that words that, but, mm -hmm. but our teachers are there to help us. And yet, again and again, even our teachers have helped us to feel as though we're not good enough. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a little story. I grew up, of course, feeling I wasn't good enough, not smart enough, not pretty enough, on and on and on. So then I go off to first grade. Okay. And I'm thinking, now I am going to get this new box of crayons and my new dress and my new lunch box, and I am going to show everybody that I'm smart because my brother was older than me and he was smart. So I thought, I'm going to be smart. Well, there was this little problem. You know, kindergarten, you color pictures and take naps and... It's fun. First <laughs> real, grade was real hard stuff. First yeah. <laughs> grade was different back then, okay. and you know, kindergarten yeah. we didn't learn much in kindergarten. First right. grade we had this thing called reading, and that was really hard for me. And we had an exercise called the spelling train. And what the teacher would do is she would line up our little chairs like a train. She would be at the head of the train, and she would hold up a spelling word. And we had to memorize our spelling words for the week. And if we didn't know the word on that flashcard, then we had to go to the caboose. Well, I spent first grade in the caboose, and I could not remember those flashcards. And for two weeks, she kept me after school one day, and the one particular word I had trouble with was T-H-E. I could not remember that word. So she made me wear a name tag, because see, she's gonna help me. She made me wear a little name tag that said T-H-E on it, and she was gonna help me remember that word. And people made fun of me for two weeks. What's wrong with you? Are you stupid? Is your name V? And they teased me about that. And you know what, Willard? I learned the word thee, but that's not all I learned. Once again, in first grade, I learned I am not enough. I am not smart enough. You know, that was not true. I was just having trouble with reading and spelling and ended up graduating from high school with honors. But did I ever feel smart? So many times I felt like that girl in the caboose.